Hey, I'm Reese Hoffa, three-time Olympian, Olympic bronze medalist in the shot put, and I'm here at Super Training to get a squat workout in with the legendary Mark Bell. Uh, super excited. Uh, haven't been here before, and looking around and looking at all this great equipment, I cannot wait to see what he dreams up. What do you, what do you think, Corey? I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. It's always been a dream to come out here. It's going to be super fun. I've not been to three Olympics. This is probably the <laughs> coolest thing I've actually done. I'm pretty pumped. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a very fun day. I just hope I survive. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing a lot of bodybuilding stuff lately, so I'm going to assume that we're going to use some weird bars. I assume we're going to do some high rep stuff and some like drop sets or clusters or something weird. Some weird bodybuilding stuff today. Yep, it should be fun. Corey has been my coach since 2011. Yes, sir. Um, in my preparation for the 2012 Olympic Games. Um, not sure if it's a coincidence, but I uh, went to two previous Olympic Games, didn't get a medal went to the 2012 Olympic Games with Corey and got a medal. So um, there's a correlation there. There's a correlation there. Uh, showed me, you know, core blend training, just helping my core, give me some new exercises, kind of getting stale. I've been in the game for roughly 10 years before I started working with Corey. And he did a great job just melding what I already do really well into some new exercises that kept me really excited and motivated on, on my pursuit to try to get an Olympic medal again. Yeah. Uh, my best outdoor throw is 73 feet 7 inches, indoors 72 feet 6 inches, which was in the top 10 all time. Got bumped down a little bit, I think I'm like 11 now, so that's pretty depressing. But uh, I'm in the top 15 total distance and shot put, and throughout my career I was ranked in the top 10 in the world for 10 consecutive years. Top 3 in the world. Top 3, top 3 in the world, sorry, top 3 in the world for 10 consecutive years. And pretty much there's only been two people do better, um, Carl Lewis and a 800 meter runner. So I like to think I'm up there. It's just But no one's ever done that in shot put. No one's you. ever done that in shot put, so that's kind of cool. But to the 2004 Athens, uh, yeah, Athens Greece Games, 2008 in Beijing, China, and the London Olympics in 2012, where I got a bronze medal. I won two world championships and then a bunch of silvers, world indoor, and stuff like that. What's the uh, super heavyweight division? That's a good question. Uh, I think it's 275 and up. Oh, well, I mean, they have this, which is 308. Is that That's the body weight, right? Yeah. I got that. Yeah, You're so below 308? What? You're below 308? Oh, is it below 308? Yeah, below 308. Oh, so I got to go here. So yeah. that's even better. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah. See, this is what's interesting. How are we having all these other big numbers? We have super heavyweight that only three he's just the guy who did it yeah that guy's not as strong see we needed to get our numbers so you walk in the gym you go straight over to the record board huh? you have to go to the record board because you say okay what what can i do <laughs> um one of our rob mcintyre so i went to his gym but we asked ahead of time we we're like hey what's your snatch record and at the time i think it was like 297 right. and i'm like well i can do 297 so I trained for about two weeks. I said, I'm gonna come down to Florida and I'm gonna get I'm gonna take number one rank. I'm gonna be number one on your board. And that's what we did at 306? 303. 303. Snatch 303. And then uh, it was John Cena's record. And then Cena goes only two pounds more and he goes three oh five. Which was pretty uh, weak move on his part. What are the essentials uh, that you carry with you in your gym bag? Uh, for me, I go belt, wrist wrap, and knee sleeves. Those are those are my go-tos. Okay. What about you, Reese? Just knee sleeves. Okay. See, I would wrench like I have a size 15 foot. So, and I have sleep apnea, so I have to be very, uh, I gotta pick myself real careful. So my shoes are like this, it's like big old boats. I, if I just put my shoes in my bag, it'd take, I would have no, sh no room for clothes. So I'm just gonna go barefoot. Is this your first meal of the day? Yeah, this is in a Greek yogurt. This is the key to mediocre success. <laughs> you want a 
mediocre body, you're gonna have to have a mediocre mind to go with it. And I'm gonna teach it to you. You guys have no idea what's behind this beard. Do you guys use a lot of specialty bars in training, typically? I am a big fan of the Duffalo bar. It's a world changer in terms of keeping my arms in nice positions. So I did straight ball forever, but Duffalo's the way to go. Unless you're powerlifting, which you don't know. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. What, what kind of uh, spurred the switch? Uh, shoulder mobility. Um, I, I couldn't quite get my hands back and I was having shoulder issues. Gotcha. So going to a Duffalo bar, allowed me to put my hands out and lower so I could like tuck my elbows to my lats so it make it easier for me to squat. While you were competing, did you, did you have uh, access to all these kind of tricks as different um, different bars and stuff? Did you no, uh, so for a while... It wasn't as popular like five no, years, five years if, ago. No, if they had the Duffalo bar right when I started, I would have been you hear a that, monster. Chris Duffin? I know. Because uh, when I first started squatting, I had horrible technique. So I went from uh, squatting like 350 pounds. And then uh, Rob McIntyre was at Georgia, who actually knew about lifting. He's like, hey, Reese, Rob McIntyre. You know, he's like, Reese, why don't you move the bar a little bit lower on your back? And that should help. And I went, I just immediately went over 500 the moment I did it. It was like, oh, this feels so much better. It's over my hips. I can, because what would happen, I, it'd be like, I have that high bar position. Yeah. So I'd squat and I'd do this. And I'd go, yeah, ah, there we go. <laughs> so I'm doing like 350 pound good mornings. <laughs> right. And Rob's like, well, you know, that maybe that you're not meant to have that bar so high. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of showed me a new position. I'm like, yes, Rob, that feels so much better. But then with that, yeah, maybe pressure on the elbows, right? Well, I thought that when you do a squat, and this is just because I just I didn't have really good coaches, I put my arms like right here. Mm -hmm. And basically the bar would have to be on my skull yeah, to hold yeah. this position. Now, for your size. For my size. So I'm like, man, this really hurts. So I do this, wing everything forward, because <laughs> right. I can't keep it here. Right. I get shoulder issues, tons of back issues. You think a lot of athletes should be using specialty bars? Absolutely. Because I mean, they're, they're not asked to squat in their competition. You, no. You, you never went to a shot put event and they said, hey, let's see what you can squat. I think it's just, <laughs> right. it's good to have knowledge about the straight bar because that's what a lot of high school kids have. Right. But if your school has the resources, you need a specialty bar for big boys. Yeah. Big boys need specialty bars, just like you need uh, specialty bench press. Like I've always benched on those really narrow benches right. and I have no shorter shoulder support. <laughs> so it would just kill my shoulders like, oh goodness. Right. And then I went, you know, Georgia had a little bit wider ones. I'm like, oh, you know, that's right. what allowed me to get big benches. That's why I benched at football because they have the wide benches there mm -hmm. instead of little narrow ones for distance runners and swimmers. Use the safety bar a good bit. Safety bar, yeah. Use the safety bar squat a lot. Um, use the bamboo bar some. Use the duffalo bar. Yeah. yeah. It's getting real.
Well, what, what's some of the things that Mark's probably, uh, that's going through Mark's mind when he's setting up the height of the box? I think it varies day to day, so it just depends on what his goal and objective is. He already did four plates for like 10 plus reps without a box, so I think he's just trying to get some more work in safely. So he'll just adjust it, I think, based off the day. Mark, how do you, uh, what's kind of going through your mind when you're setting up like the height of the box? Are you trying to get something kind of close to parallel, or? I'm trying to cheat. Gotcha. Um, you know, uh, I did a set of 10, and I feel like almost every one of those squats was probably below parallel, or maybe just at parallel, and it felt really good. And so, <clears throat> my back has been acting a little funny the last couple weeks, so the goal sometimes with the box height will change just depending on how I feel. So a lot of times I'll take the box height really low, and do like a 12 inch box and have my heels elevated and get more into the quads. Today I want to get into hamstrings. I want to keep my form. I want to stimulate my body, but I don't want to annihilate it. And so therefore the box height is a little high, I would say probably an inch or so high. Um, but box squatting and regular squats are way different from each other. And so therefore I don't think it's crucial on a box squat unless you're working on a touch and go box squat. I don't think it's crucial on a box squat to squat below parallel. So uh, what I usually suggest for people, work on form perfection. Work on moving in a range of motion that's perfect. And a lot of times if you're gonna do something that's perfect, the range of motion is gonna be very, very short. Think about a rack deadlift with your shoulders real high and your butt real low. Think about that, a rack deadlift. Butt is really low, shoulders are really high, and you stay there. Range of motion will be short, and the weight that you can use will probably not be a lot. So there's something to keep in mind. Um, if you're having trouble tucking your elbows, the, the, one of the best things for uh, tucking the elbows on a bench press is board pressing. Hey coach, I have trouble touching in the same spot when I bench press. When the weights get heavier, I tend to go elbows out and I tend to bench higher. Quickest solution, shorten your range of motion. Yeah, have you ever, uh, you ever watched an Olympian train, ever? Not at this capacity, no. No, usually you see it on TV and the TV special. But never in person. Never in person. So it's quite a, quite a, an experience to see someone who puts in, dedicates most of their life to becoming uh, an Olympian and an Olympic medalist for that, re uh, for that matter. So it's kind of cool to see how intense they are without having to be so crazy like us powerlifters are. Um, it's a different level of focus. We can all learn from it. Let me know when you're yeah, good. Some for a few. Okay. Probably about eight reps. So even though what we did today, I probably won't be able to walk because my muscles will be sore. I won't have that same stiffness of the ligaments and joints and shit like that. So it's just a way to mix it up. How do you guys feel? How did it feel today to mix it up, do something different? Um, I actually enjoyed it. This is a really interesting way to train. I, have, I don't usually train like this. So to come in and do something, kind of pre-fatigue uh, the muscle before actually doing squat and the other lifts right. was awesome. Um, I know I was cussing your name a lot <laughs> on the leg press part That's of right. this. But gave me Tourette's syndrome. Gave me Tourette's, but uh, at the end of it, um, I'm not dead. <laughs> and I feel like, hey, I'm probably going to get a lot stronger breaking down the muscle fibers that's going to rebuild and make me a bigger machine. So right. I love that. What about you, Corey? Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I liked doing a little bit of pre-work, getting the blood flow going uh, before hitting the squat rack. 
got to use some different bars. Uh, yeah, they did not know bar. how to use. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a different monster. Um, a lot of fun though. Really good time. Changes up the center of gravity and just kind of mixes things up a little bit. And you know, I think sometimes for us as athletes, if you if you have a football background, he's got a track background. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're done with your sport, you're like, mm, what do I do with myself now? Mm -hmm. And for me, being a longtime powerlifter. It doesn't really make sense for me to just power lift all the time, just a straight up, flat out power lift all the time. I'm retired from it, I'm done with it, I can still do a lot of things I enjoy, so even for your, for yourself, yeah, still incorporate explosive movements, but maybe every once in a while you do something that's totally out of the norm, oh, yeah. like, a, like a bicep workout. Oh yeah. You know, how many bicep workouts did you do in your <laughs> shot put career? Probably not many. Not many. Maybe yeah. you trained your arms just for a little bit of strength and you did a set of hammer curls here and there, but oh, yeah. it wasn't like twelve sets of isolation for the biceps. Mm -hmm. But now that you're now that you've moved on, like you can pick and choose whatever you want and you can kind of say, All right, well I'm gonna train this way for this day for this training effect because I don't I'm not worried about throwing that extra inch Absolutely. or that extra foot or however far you're trying to throw the damn thing, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Great having you guys here today. Going to podcast with these guys a little bit later today, uh, get further interviews with them, talk to them about their gym, and learn all kinds of cool stuff. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. See y'all later.